So we're going to talk about the, the smaller tools first. Here we have some pruners. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get this out. All right, in our little garden bag. So we have here some pruners, and you want to make sure you have a sharp pruner. As you can see, this one's nice and sharp. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because you want to have a nice, smooth cut, a clean cut. You don't want to get your plant sick from any other plant. You want to make sure you disinfect it, maybe wipe it with some right. alcohol. Mm -hmm. And be careful also if you do have a sharp not to cut yourself. Right. And one thing that I want to mention about the pruner, if you have small children in your home, you want to make sure that whichever pruner you get, it has a safety latch because they're going to see you cutting. And of course, they want to go do some cutting of That's themselves. True. So get one that feels comfortable, not too heavy, easy on the hand, and have a safety latch. Now, going through our garden bag right here, the next tool that we're going to look at is our hand trowel. And I'll just take out the rake and the, um, this is a transplanter while we're at it. So if you have a pot garden or a small raised bed, of course, you won't be able to put the big tools in it. So having your hand trowel will help you to make small holes. You can transplant things and you can also use it to turn your soil. The cultivator as well, you can use that to remove roots or any form of that's, weed. That reminds me of a, like a small plow. Yes, yes. So you use that to go through when you dig out the weed, excess root fibers that may be in the soil. And this tool I really like, this is your transplanter. As the name suggests, you can use it for transplanting. And it's sort of like an inch measure. So for example, you want to plant some seeds and you want the depth to be accurate, you can use your transplanter and it's like a measuring device You just stick it in and it tells you exactly which depth you can go to plant your seeds. All right, and for our next hand tool we have here, this is a weeder mm -hmm. and you can use this, I, like my wife said, we, we, we want to pull the weeds with our hands, right. but sometimes the weeds are buried deep into the, into the ground. Like the a roots, dandelion. Right, the roots go, go deep, deep in. Mm -hmm and you pull it and you just pull the top, right. but the root's still in there. So what you wanna do is put this next to the, the weed and as you push it in, the, it loosens up the root and then allow you to pull out the root much easily okay. or easier. All right, so moving on, the next thing that we're gonna look at, we looked at our gloves, we looked at our small hand tools here. Um, is there, there's anything, okay, in there. Now, okay, so the sharpest, tool you're going to have a hand tool that you use for your garden is a machete if you want to clear any small plot plot of land or you just want to remove some overgrown weeds in a little spot your machete is going to be your the tool of choice of course you want to be careful not to hurt yourself if you have a stick as you chop, it, the stick stands in the way to protect you from hitting your foot. Mm. But this tool is very effective in any form of cutting job. All right, so next we have some loopers. And mm -hmm. these here are used for your larger uh, pruning. Yes. So if you have um, something not too thick, maybe like an inch and a half inch, yes. before you have to use a saw. So this, mm -hmm. this would be something good to use. Um, and also we have one here that will extend this one here, it will extend and allow you to go even So for, if you're short and you want to cut a branch way up high. And it also allows for more pressure as it clicks while you do that. And these, these are real good for uh, the higher bushes. You want to also prune in uh, the winter time before spring. Right. to allow for new growth. Right. And then moving on to the larger tools, over here we have um, these two tools that the name can be used interchangeably. Here you have a spade and a shovel. Spade and a shovel. And for your moving outside of the raised bed or outside of your pots, if you want to plow your land, if you want to plant a tree, of course you're going to go for the bigger tools because can you imagine planting an orange tree and using a hand trowel, no way. you'll be digging forever. So this tool, Jose, how effective is that in digging? All right, so the reason why this one is pointed mm -hmm. is for that reason, because okay. this one is for digging to go into your dirt um, as you are digging for your holes for the trees. Right. And so this one is more effective for that use. It is wide enough where you can 
move some dirt around, yes. but wouldn't you want to prefer a wider one? So yes. tell us about this one. So here. this one, it has, of course, a flatter, a flatter tip. And so if you want to be able to lift any heavy material or if you want to move some dirt, you would go for this tool. Also, if you want to make a, a nice little edge for clean, your garden. Clean cut. A clean cut. This one, this tool will give you a clean cut to right. make a raised bed or any form of a box in your right, garden. Right. All right. So what else do we have to share with uh, our viewers? Let's, let's look at the, the hole here. And, and while you get the hole, why don't you get the, the small shovel that's okay. there at the bottom. Here you go. So here, this, this is your hole. It's, and this one you would use to um, scrape away at the weeds. Mm -hmm. um, it, it wouldn't be efficient to get the roots, but at least it'll get the weeds out of the way so that you can um, sow some seeds or yes. for whatever purpose you want to like clear yes. a small plot of land. This is the tool that you would want to use. And of course, this tool comes in, the shaft has, has different length. So if you're taller, of course, you want to get a That's taller true. shaft so you're not hurting your back or straining yourself as you go to remove the weeds from your garden. You can also use the hole to make shallow trench, as Jose mentioned. So you can plant your, your um, if you sow your seeds, that doesn't require that much depth. For example, your beets and your carrots. True. All right. And here we have, whose is this? This is Michael's. Michael's tool. As you see, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be very effective for me to use this one because, of course, I'm going to have to be Unless bending. Unless you're in a, in a small plot of land and using it. And, and what about we've used it for transplanting? Yes. Say, for instance, you have bananas in a pot. Of course, they're going to get new suckers. So this is excellent for separating your perennials right. if you want to put it in a pot. While we wouldn't use the larger shovel or spade, this one would be very effective for that. All right. So now we're going to show you how some of these tools are used in the garden. We have uh, some, some clips for you today. So let's look at that. <clears throat> Here is Charisse with a hand rake. And as you can see with this hand rake, she's able to um, pull out the debris or the dead leaves and the things that were in the garden and leave the dirt behind. The dirt is left and the wood chips are left behind as well. Mm -hmm. So this is a great tool that you can use for that purpose. Yes, the difference between the, um, this rake and the leaf rake, as you mentioned, while the, the, the prongs are a little bit farther apart, so you can even scrape through the wood chips and only get the leaves and everything else will remain behind. So. If you, after um, your gardening season, if you have a messy garden, you want to leave the dirt in place or your wood chips in place, this would be the tool of choice to make sure that your garden is clean. As we saw that you did that, the very same thing that yes. you're talking about. Yes. So that people can see what you're talking about. Right. All right. Let's look at the next video here. In this next video, we will see Michael and Mommy. Here we have a... A uh, pitchfork and a digging fork. And then Michael is here helping. Look at that load. Oh, yeah. So Michael is helping with the digging fork. Now, these two, this one is a little smaller. That's why he's able to use it. Right. But I wouldn't recommend that one for moving debris like that. Yeah. As the, as the name suggests, pitchfork, you lift and you pitch things, you lift and you throw things. Right. So it's excellent for spreading wood chips or any form of compost around your garden. And if you have a question about what that um, wagon was, what, let's take a, let's see if in this next clip. All right, here we have Joshua, that, that wheelbarrow was too heavy for him. And we have next to that a wagon. Michael is touching the wagon. The difference between these is one, has no holes in the bottom, so it's able to hold the dirt in the wheelbarrow. And the wagon, the one that Michael is pulling, this one has holes in the bottom so the dirt goes through. It's great to move pots and move debris, and you see Joshua's trying to catch up because he was left behind. <laughs> and that wagons are, you know, if you are elderly, if you cannot do a lot of lifting based on, you know, some previous injuries, wagon is very effective have in your garden. Helps you to be able to move pots you know, haul debris and things like that. So 
If you don't have a wagon, if I would recommend you get in a wagon so that you're Especially not straining yourself. Especially when you yourself. have a, a lot of pots. When you have a lot of pots that you need to move back mm -hmm. and forth, it takes a lot of work. As we learn, lugging around pots is not what you want to do, so right. the wagon comes in real handy right. for that. All right, let's take a look at the next video. All right, so here we have the digging fork. Now, the digging fork can be used to aerate the ground without disturbing too much of the living organisms that are already in your dirt. So uh, it's used instead of a shovel in the ground. Here Michael is showing us this, the same ideas, how to use it. As you can see, the garden is your first school. This is where you want to teach your children how to build character. And so there you have it. Those are the the, the, the tools and how to use them in the garden. We showed you what uh, a basic idea of what the tools are that, mm -hmm. that you will see when you're working in the garden. Right. Uh, um, some people may not be familiar with these tools. That's why we wanted to introduce them. Right. As well as the hand tools that make gardening a lot more effective, makes it easier. With your hand tools, though, however, one thing I want to share with you, when you purchase your tools, you want to get something that will stand out. Okay, so not a dull color. Say, for instance, a brown blade. If it's black, you want to make sure that the metal is really shiny so that you don't misplace your tools. Right. Because we've gone and repurchased a lot, and then later on, they just show up. Because mm -hmm. if you leave them hanging around, they will get lost in its surroundings. So getting a tool that will stand out will save you a lot of money and make it easier to find right. as you're going through right. the garden. So in our, our next video... We're going to show how to maintain your tools because this is an investment when you're buying tools. You want to make a good investment right. and you want to make sure that you keep your tools where you're not just buying tools over and over again. That's right. So you want to learn how to keep your tools. We're going to show you that next time. So until then, happy planting. Happy planting.